welcome. In this session on natural deduction, we'll begin exploring proof by contradiction. Proof by contradiction is closely related to a different kind of proof that uses contradiction. In a previous session, we began exploring what we called negation introduction, which was a proof that involved the use of the contradiction or bottom symbol. We also, in a previous session, explored some of the rules around double negation. Proof by contradiction is closely related to both of these. The idea is that if we suppose for the purpose of argument the negation of some formula, and we then use a line of reasoning, and we arrive at the bottom symbol, then under that assumption for the purpose of argument, we can use the rule of proof by contradiction, and we can conclude that the formula is true. This is a method that may be familiar from mathematics, and this is one of the um, derived or implied rules in natural deduction that is not present in certain forms. Those forms are called intuitionistic or constructivist logics. And in those, proof by contradiction is not a permitted inference method. For us, it is. Let's look at a simple example of a proof by contradiction. And this also involves one of the oddities of material implication in all of logic. If we suppose that the negation of P material implies P, we can prove that P must be true. As usual, we'll write our single premise here. The negation of P materially implies P. So that is our premise. And what we would like to conclude is the formula P. The only rule that we know of that we can use so far would be this proof by contradiction. In order to set that up, what we would do is create an assumption box, which is our first step. The second step is write down the reason for the assumption box, and we're going to use proof by contradiction as our inference method. Our third step is to fill in the first line of the box, which is the negation of the formula that we're aiming at. So that would be line two in this case is the negation of P. And the reason that appears in our proof is that it is an assumption. And then we write the bottom line of the box, which in this case is the contradiction symbol. Our line of reasoning now is really simple, is really short. If we apply elimination, um, if we apply implication elimination, or modus ponens, to this formula using this assumption, what we get is line three of a proof, which is the symbol P. And we got that from applying line two and line one and implication elimination or modus ponens. We already know that if we have a formula on one line and the negation of a formula on another line, we can deduce the bottom symbol or the contradiction. And so that now becomes line four of our proof. And we arrived at that from line three and line one, and that is negation elimination because it eliminates the ne that negated formula. Well, we have now filled in our top line, filled in our bottom line, we have a complete line of reasoning that gets us to that bottom line. And so we've accomplished this part of the proof. We can then assign a line number to what is outside the box. And we can give the reason for using that as the construction from line two to line four, proof by contradiction. And so what we've done is we've used proof by contradiction in a five-line proof. And what we've proved is something that might strike us as odd 
if we were just talking, for example, with some non-computing friends. If we said the falsity of a proposition implies the proposition, so the proposition must be true, they might look at us a little bit oddly. And this is a slightly odd argument. However, it does follow from the rules of natural deduction.